Real quick before we get started, I just wanted to point out that this is a thing. This is called Office Life Simulator. It's a game that I'm working on developing. So yeah, check that out. Hello and welcome back to Kerbal Space Ram. We're in 1.0 looking at planes made in .90 and seeing how well they've made the transition. Again, this is the Cheetah Light by one Mr. Platinum Lynx. Huh. Apparently it is anti-lift. Oh hey look, the landing gear is on cubic struts. That's interesting. It's episode 20. 20. Wow, 20 episodes. Plus there's like been a bunch of bonus stuff, so it's more like 30 now, but wow, I can't believe it. This is like the one thing that I've managed to actually keep doing. <laughs> Alright, let's go ahead and wait. No, before I go. Aw, you didn't change the things to be different things, and you left fuel. Yep, you left monoprop in here. I always hate when people do that. Oh, apparently I have a durable Steve on the runway. You know what? No, no, I have to. I have to continue. I was about to be like, yeah, let's play with that. But no, no, I have to continue. At least I, I like how these do not clip. I always, I always hate seeing control surfaces that clip into things. So right away, there is one thing I'm really liking about this. Oh, your landing gear should probably be a bit further forward, considering this isn't going to take off until we hit the end of the runway, because your landing gear is so far back that it can't gain enough pitch authority to get off the ground on its own but uh, it has to drop off to go up. Whereas if the landing gear were, whoops, I hit T when I meant to hit um, G. If your landing gear were further forward, then you would be able to take off easier. Let's see, this thing gets going pretty fast. I like it, it looks like, you know, it, it looks like a, a real plane. Like a, a plane would actually might look like this. It's a tiny little thing, tiny little fast thing. Let's pull up, see how well it turns. Turns pretty well, I'd say. Yeah. The cheetah light. So it's supposed to be fast and light, I assume. Because, you know, cheetah, fast, and light. Well, it is small. It is light. So yeah, I think this plane fits its name fairly well. And is overall a very decent little thing to fly. Alright, let's do a low pass. Or crash on the ground. No, I didn't crash. Let's do a low pass of the KSC. Come on, let's not crash into anything. There we go. Pull up really hard. A nice high G turn, and possibly high G if you were human. But these are Kerbals. They can take this kind of stuff. Alright, let's move on to the next one. So the next one is a Cheetah Light with extra... Oh, it's the same thing, but you clipped a tank in here. What? I was expecting it to have like a drop tank and be really cool, and no, it's just a clipped extra. Why is it not even like full all the way? You're like, with extra fuel, and it has like not, I don't know, I assume it has more, but it looks like it has less. Then again, I didn't check the amount of fuel in the other one, so I don't really have a, no a way of knowing, except by my inability to speak English this morning and how well this will fly. Well, let's see. We're in the air, and this thing is not accelerating nearly as fast as the other one. And it also looks like its top speed is probably going to be lower too, so that's definitely a side effect of having another part in there. Although the part being glitched inside like that means it really shouldn't have any drag, especially the new aerodynamics. I said that kind of strangely. But yeah, it definitely, I think maybe, yeah, it does have more fuel despite not being fully fueled. It's just uh, heavier and a bit slower. Next up, we have one more by the same Platinum Lynx. Wow! I can see why it's called Fishy. <laughs> wow, that's cool. So you got little SAS units on the wings with batteries on them. Extra landing gear on the wings to stabilize things. It's got a lot of engines. Three VTOL engines and two main engines. It's got another SAS wheel back there. I don't see one up front. I see part clippiness that's like, ah, my brain, no, help me. But, uh, otherwise, oh, it's got a docking port on top. Yeah, I hadn't noticed that yet. <laughs> I really like the way you've done both cockpits here. Like, just the look of that. I like the dual cockpits thing you got going here. Very cool. And overall, I like this design. It looks nice. I wonder how well it will fly though. Let's take a look at these. Oh, come on. There we go. Oh, that might not be so good. Huh. You know what? I just remembered. The parts were rebalanced. 
so it's entirely possible that this won't work at all, and it's not his fault. Alright, I want everyone to hope, and hope really hard, because if this doesn't work, that would, that would really suck. And I wanted to, oh cool, because the cockpit's down there, you can like see over it, that's cool. Alright, I want this to work, so everybody hope. I don't know if you could hear me mashing the button just then, but see, action group one is supposed to activate the VTOL engines, that's what I was told, and uh, apparently it does not. So let's activate this engine, it's just one up there, yeah, and we'll activate one here, we'll activate one here, and then full throttle, and hope for the best. Does this have RCS? No, it does not. Okay. Oh look, yeah, yeah, we get the pretty effects. Ooh. That was a nice takeoff. Now will it stay a nice, uh, that's gonna crash into the ground right now. Alright, so that went about as well as the standard Kerbal launch. Now like I said a minute ago, that is 99% most likely not his fault at all. The thing is, some of the parts were changed in how they work in KSP 1.0, and this is 1.0, and this was made in, 9, in .90, so those small differences, like, they're, they're small things, like a little bit different mass here and there, a little bit different cost. The cost doesn't really matter, because this is sandbox save, but the uh, slight differences in performance of engines and maybe of weight of different things is what's going to really, you know, screw a design like this over. So, let's try it as a uh, short takeoff and landing system, and I'll quickly disable those engines manually once I get into the air. Okay, there we go, short takeoff, shut down this engine, shut down this engine, realize that I should have shut down this engine first, and now we're gonna die. Unless I can, nope, we're gonna die. <laughs> oh, that's gonna go well, nope, we're gonna be fine. But we are going to crash, in a quite epic fashion, really. Alright, this time around, we're very simply going to take off like normal and fly around like normal and see how well it will perform like that, because hopefully that still works. Unfortunately, the VTOL function does need to be adjusted for 1.0, but otherwise, this craft should work fine. Whoa! Um, I said should. What I should have said was that I hope it would work fine, because the thing is, I honestly wouldn't know, because... Wow, that thing blew up so hard the runway vanished for a minute. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I, I I wouldn't know, and it's it's not working very well, but that again could just be part balance stuff. It could also be because the wings are uh Oh, that's cool. Shut up, phone. Phone, why were you telling me to leave? I don't have class today. Phone, you're dumb. Yes. What was I saying? I forgot what I was saying. Here, enjoy this spinning cockpit. I'm going to tell him to EVA while spinning. Fwing! Ha 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 ha. Ah, that was worth it. So yeah, once again, that's probably not his fault. It's probably just due to changes in how KSP works. And I invite you to submit another version of this for 1.0 if you still have it, if you haven't already. If you have already, and I just hadn't noticed, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten through all my emails yet. I'm a, a little bit behind right now. I've had, um, well... I've been a little bit behind for a while, but especially recently because I started working on that game, that uh, Office Life Simulator, which I really need to finish, and uh, yeah, stuff. In fact, I might have mentioned at the beginning of this video. I don't know yet, because if I mention at the beginning of this video, I'll actually record it at the end of this video. <laughs> Next up, not by Platinum Links. This one's by Oliver Paulson. It's called The Bumblebee. It's pretty fat. I guess that's why it's called The Bumblebee. Does, does it... Ah, see, he did the control surfaces. See, see, he knows what he's talking about. Or maybe he doesn't, but looks pretty good. I like it. All right, let's give it a fly. You know, while this is loading, I think I realized why this is called the bumblebee. I mean, there's two reasons, really. One is because it's kind of fat, like a bumblebee. Another is because, just like a bumblebee, this thing doesn't look like it should be able to fly. <laughs> but it does quite easily, actually. Look at that. This is making me think of like, um, this is like made me think of like a cargo plane. Like one of those really, really weirdly designed cargo planes. Like, 
I'm trying to think of a good example. I don't know the names of any of those really weirdly designed cargo planes, but there's these really, really weirdly designed cargo planes, and this is uh, making me think of that because it's like a a little bit. It's a it's a little bulky thing that. Um, Honestly, this is like inspiring me to make a uh, cargo plane using the Mark III parts, because you could make something like this that's a like very similar to this design. That is a, uh, I'm drifting in it by the way. <laughs> yeah, like a, a a little cargo plane that's about this about this like uh, not this size, but you know this thing. That reminds me, I need to work on the Saturn carrier, because um, the Saturn carrier, it it's. Yeah, it, it 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 needs an update, and I need to finally, you know, take one of those rockets up in it. And uh, I don't know. It depends if the parts are updated, if I can make it work again. Cause I was I was accidentally exploiting a bug in that mod. Look at this thing. Very nice. What are these controlled on, by the way? Anyhow, these are active for roll. Okay, what about these? Just roll just roll and these are just pitch yep and that's just yaw interesting well this thing has great roll capability then I'd love to see some of these be turned into flaps or you know air brakes or whatever let's see can we do we have no none of it is air brakes that's unfortunate I'd love to see this like you could set this as air brake going one way like going up or something right and then you can set these to go down and you could make air brakes for this thing and it would totally look awesome yes let's fly really close to the VAB oh. I wanted to fly closer than that but oh well look at that <laughs> thumbnail 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 maybe I don't know <laughs> Either way, I like this design, but uh, I think that's all for today. Sorry if today's episode is a little bit shorter, but uh, I hope you enjoyed it anyhow. Let's go fly in between these buildings before I actually stop recording. Is that a gas station? That's a gas station. Oh, 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 relax, relax, plane. Slow down. Everything is awesome. Everything is awesome. Please don't crash right now. Everything is awesome. Ignore the clippy glitchiness. Oh, shit. Whoa. Good thing I decided to turn on the SAS. Whoa. Because this ground's a bit bumpy, and this thing is like, whoa, 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 whoa. Come on, come on. Okay, okay. All right, there we go. Perfect landing. <laughs> yeah, never land a plane like that. That's just a bad way to land. Did I already say thanks for watching and all that usual crap I say at the end? I don't know. Bye.